And I can double check on that too, Mark, if you want me to. I, being in the business world, no we're scared. Yeah, the, I, the, our health insurance group that we're with is um, is pretty good, and it's a large enough group that I think that we we uh, we have traditionally achieved some pretty good savings with them, and they're pretty aggressive about trying to keep that. Um, you know, one of the things that we could choose to do, it's a very, very generous perk that we have here at this library, um, what we pay for health insurance. Uh, um, I know when I was here the first time, we only paid, the staff only had to pay $10 of their health insurance. Now it's up to a whopping $25. <laughs> um, it does make a difference. That so would offset that a little oh, yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and right now, uh, it's only, it's like $7.25 a month. So I did bump that up. You know, with the anticipation that we might see some increase in the in the health insurance costs, but not. not yeah, most insurance goes up every year. Yeah, I don't know right. about what you did. Yeah. So, but I'll take another look at that and see if I can. Um, and I think I'm actually going to be going to our health insurance board meeting in between now and our regular board meeting. So I will see if I can get some firmer numbers, and um, so we can have a. a more comfort with that with that number. Anyone else? Are there any of those? On the retirement, as I said, this reflects uh, the huge increase that we're seeing this year and um, Tomorrow when you come in to sign checks, don't die. Um, we are writing the check to the actuary for, or to CNA for this payment for this year, which will be $223,000. So, um, it's hard to write a check. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, um, I remember the first time I had a paper for the college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, uh, and again, that's not a number that I can, uh, that's pretty well said. I have a, we're legally obligated to pay those, pay that money. Um, the good news, as I explained in my in my notes, was that um, adjustments to the assumptions were done this year. So in subsequent years, we should see maybe only a two to three percent rise in um, the MRF, the CNA portion. And actually, this year, IMRF, our IMRF employer portion did go down slightly. So that's good. Yeah, that's always nice to know. Motivation. We brought it down five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I have spoken both with Kevin before he left and with our new network administrator Ron Friedman, who will be coming to the board meeting so he can meet all of you. Um, at least initially, he wants to pop in and introduce himself. Um, uh, this the reduction in that uh, budget line reflects. Uh, not having to, we had some hardware purchases that we had to make, like server, we had to buy some, some big ticket items this year that we're not going to need in subsequent next year. And also with the hiring of Ron, who actually has a, a, a number of computer science, a latest computer science degree, both bachelor's and, and master's, I believe, but also a number of certifications. Um, he has an expertise, in, particularly in Windows and Microsoft products that Kevin did not have. And so we outsourced um, a lot of that network support through uh, to Sikich. And our goal is that we will be able to um, minimize that significantly, reduce that significantly, if not eliminate it altogether. And that was a $15,000 fee. So being able to do that actually will save us a ton of money and still leaves us at a very comfortable level for any automation software or hardware needs that we'll have even with a $5,000 reduction. Mm -hmm. The other question I have is uh, the databases, mm -hmm. do we not expect them to go up cost of living kind of raises? Um, we do not, and actually, the, uh, I, Natalia and Colleen actually set, and Colleen was actually in charge of the databases, and. Um, so she worked with Natalia on this budget before she was, was so ill she couldn't come in. And um, this is through contacts, either you know contractual agreements that we have with them. Um, sometimes they're more than one year, that kind of thing. So um, these numbers are, are pretty well set and will probably stay flat. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's called the right. Later. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but but we're we're good with that. Mm -hmm. But again, very little wiggle room in that because this is pretty much what it costs us. Am I being impossible? No, I, I don't think I'm so. I think this is why I'm possible. I mean, certainly if anyone else has any questions about any of their items, I also <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, I didn't do as well on the employee handbook. <laughs> I don't have a lot of questions about the employee handbook, even though I didn't do it all. I have a few, but uh, not too many. We can see where I'll be as well. 9.30. 9.30. <laughs> I knew that. What are we meeting in here? Yes. So I'm going to go back to the director's report from August and okay. just look at some pure numbers. Okay. So when I do planning on the businesses, I, I always look at trend lines. Okay. And our overall, and pick any line you want, but over the last year they all tend to be trending downward. And then the total cert for the last six months tends to be just kind of flat. Okay. Um, and it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, when I look at adult versus youth um, comparisons with last year, we got two negative numbers. One's a down 12, and another's a down 6. And so were you talking about circulation statistics? Or? Um, some of this, yeah. Okay. So, you know, we're kind of, we're not going up. Um, and I look at where some of the statistics are, are moving or not moving. So. Download and streaming's up. Yes. You know, so off-site visit to our stuff is up. Yeah. I find that weird because website visits to, you know, were down compared okay. to a previous year. Three and a half percent mm -hmm. or so, but nonetheless down. Um, total AV um, up big. Are, are we looking to budget based on this switch of people using the library remotely as opposed to coming in here um, and, you know, inside the brick and mortar? Uh, well, it, it, yes, in some ways. Um, and it's probably not very well reflected in, excuse me, the budget. And that's more just a function of, of where we put different things. Um, when we look at things, when we look at, say, the book budget, for example, um, that in, includes uh, while it might, you know, be flat or whatever, but that includes a shift away from, you know, some shift away from print, putting money towards print resources, to putting it towards our downloadable ebooks and e-resources. So you don't see that on here, yeah. but I see that, you know, in my internal numbers, saying, okay, I know I'm giving Baker and Taylor, for example, maybe ten thousand dollars or less than I was last year, but I know I'm giving that amount of money to Overdrive so that we can purchase more ebooks because we are trying to meet that need. So some of those those things are being addressed already, but you're just not seeing them in, in the way that we've got the budget aligned right now. Um, and actually, you know, since, it, I'll just talk about ebooks, for example, but you know, since they started kind of becoming more popular, we knew they were really here to stay because they went back and forth for a long, long time to talk about ebooks and nothing ever happened. But when it finally did start to happen, um, libraries, we kind of budgeted for them all over the place. And, um, you know, we, we started out by budgeting for them as a format. And so we said, okay, we'll, have, we'll put them in the AV line or we'll do something else with them. And now I think most libraries have kind of gone back to the idea that these are books, they're just in a different format. So we're going to budget, we're going to put that in the budget line that talks about what they are, not about the format that they're in. So to us, it's just a book. It's just a different format, so that money is going to be coming out of that. So, so you're not seeing some of that switch just because of the way that our budget is currently constructed. Um, but the other thing in terms of um, like circulation stats and that kind of thing, um, I do think uh, one of the trends that m many libraries are seeing, most libraries, is you know kind of this, I don't want to say move away from circulation as a, as a statistic, but 
the realization that the circulation statistic is less important now than it used to be. For example, you know, there's a lot of people in this building every day. Um, they might not check out one thing. <clears throat> However, they're in here, they're using our space, they're using our meeting rooms, they're using our Wi-Fi. <coughs> and so they're really using us. They're, we are serving a need. Mm -hmm. But we don't have anything on what we give you every month that counts that. So when we look at those statistics, what we're seeing is kind of a more traditional way of counting. And maybe one of the things that I'm looking at doing is revamping the statistics for next year. Um, and looking at some or trying to capture some of that information so that we have a more accurate way of looking at how people are using our facility, the, our collections, our services, um, our Wi-Fi, whatever the case may be. So um, I think some of, some of what you're seeing is we want to be paying attention to those trend lines, um, thinking about what that means. You know, maybe it means that we look at um, do we look at keeping our collection at a, at a certain size so that we can um, put more seating in? Because that's where we're seeing a need. Something like that, just, you know, just kind of as a, as a quick and dirty sort of thing. The other thing I think that is really important that um, doesn't come out in some the statistical reporting that we're trying to work on, particularly in youth services, because um, we're looking at shelving and some other things and trying to create more spaces, um, is the idea that uh, you know, your collection size is one thing, but what, you, what you're really wanting to do is, is make sure that a certain percentage of your collection is being turned over every year. Um, and I don't, and so what we're looking at is maybe eliminating, or reducing the size of some of the collections to increase the turnover. So, um, and also kind of culling through things that maybe have been sitting on the shelf but haven't been checked out for a long time. And so, and one of the things that they've done, they've done lots of studies on this, is that when your collection is a little bit smaller, when it's newer, when it's more attractive, when it's more, um, when it's shelved differently, when you've got face-out shelving, those kinds of things, the more displays you can have, the increase in circulation. You see an increase in circulation. So, you know, I'm working with, with both the department managers about how we can uh, better showcase some of our, our collections in order to increase those circulation. But also then recognizing that circulation isn't kind of the be all and end all statistic that it once was, and that we need to be looking at other measurements of use. I Is agree that? with that. Okay. Yeah. Do you do hourly yeah. headouts yeah. several times a year? Um, we don't do hourly ones. We do do, I mean, our, our uh, gates do automatically okay. count. count. So we do, yeah, so we have count at any time. We can go and we can see that. Okay. Um, when I work at Niles, um, we keep track of interactions. Right. Like what kind of question was answered. Um, and it's all computerized. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like first read. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. They use so it here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and if you want to see any further yes, details, it, said desk track. <laughs> it probably doesn't say desk track. Oh, okay. it pro what it does is it lists, and again, um, yeah. oh yeah, the questions and everything. It it the, thing, the other thing it does is there. there's two tabs. There's the questions, and then there's like, not that it always gets done, but the idea is that every hour you're getting up and counting okay. how many people are okay. in. Yeah, but I mean, we can look at that, but um, I don't so think we're using that, but yeah. System. Yeah, but we do use desk tracker. We use desk, track, desk tracker yeah, here. There's just two tabs, activity mm -hmm. and one I was there on yeah. a Saturday, so I can see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a desk tracker is nice actually because it's um for those of you who aren't librarians, it's actually it's it's a, a internet based uh, resource that allows us to uh, count and uh, quantify and. Uh, Kind of qualify the reference questions that are asked at public service desks, mm -hmm. and so you have a variety of things. So, you know, is it, is it in person on the phone, email, text, whatever? Um, you know, is it directional, title? I mean, you, there's some set uh, set categories of things that you can add. Then, um, how long did it take you to answer it? You know, then there's a, all kinds of like other information that you can add. What did you need to answer it? That kind of thing. So it gives us the ability to really pull out some interesting information and useful information. Um, Again, looking forward, thinking about the statistics and what's meaningful, the department managers and I will be talking a lot about that and also coming back to the board and saying, okay, beyond things that I need to know for IPLAR and some of those things, what, is the most mean what are the meaningful statistics that you guys want to see 
because quite frankly, if I'm counting something and no one cares, why aren't I counting it? <laughs> you know, if the state doesn't need it, if you guys don't need it, why are we counting it? But also, you know, just recognizing that there is some changes in the way that people are using our facility, and I want to be able to track that because if you do look at things like circulation counts, they're down everywhere. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that we're less busy because we're not. I mean, you know. People are in here and they're using us when they're asking us questions. And a lot of those things are requiring so much more staff interaction than they ever did before. So your staff time is being utilized in a completely different way than it used to be. So, um, so as we look at those statistics, and like I said, one of my goals for next year is to completely revamp that. So all of those statistical, uh, all of those statistics that I'm reporting on every month are meaningful for all of us. <coughs> That means your question mark. You mm -hmm. okay. said in your, I'm trying to see which report this is, but the general one. Okay. You said uh, we, will, we, will, we were able to decrease the slides slightly. Right. Why? Um, well, first of all, the renovation should mean that we don't need quite as much uh, general maintenance that we've done in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. defined it as general maintenance, right. painting, landscaping, right. parking lot lease, which does go up every month. It year. goes up next month. Plowing <laughs> and salt and right. other miscellaneous stuff. So it's, it's routine maintenance. Right. Uh, according to the estimate, we used it this year. Yeah, um, we did. There were some things that happened this year, too, that were not necessarily anticipated, and I know some monies came out of this fund to pay for them. Like, there was some maintenance that went with the, uh, the bathroom renovations after they flooded again. Um, some of this uh, money was because I made some decisions based on the amount of money we had left. So I did things like I replaced all the drinking fountains. And so that was, I think, $2,500 to replace all three of them, that kind of thing. So I was able to use this money because I knew it was already budgeted. But I know going forward, for example, I'm not going to have to replace the drinking fountains every year. Right. You know, cause, and that's a $2,500 Right. cost right there. So I just know that there's some things that we're already taking care of this year because we have some money that we could expend. So I made that choice to do that this year rather than pushing that off to further yeah. to another year, so knowing I could decrease that by a little, knowing that we were going to have some other big expenses. Okay. Under 7020, I assume is where the the uh, services were. right and as I said in um, both of my uh, page both of my packets of notes both for my recommended increase and then to kind of give you an idea of what a flat two percent or two point five percent increase mm -hmm. would be um, that anything over kind of that flat increase will be extra that that I am hoping that we can put towards improvements in the youth services department that is my goal. Um, as I said, uh, both for some safety reasons and some aesthetics reasons, and quite frankly, um, people love the renovation, and they're always disappointed when they get downstairs and they realize that it, some of that hadn't carried through to the services department. Understanding completely that you know money was an issue, absolutely. So, you know, my goal is if we can make some changes to to help bring. You know, it, you know, improve the kind of aesthetic of these sort of things. They did, and <laughs> I'm proud of myself for doing that. that was, she's right, though. I heard from a lot of people. Yeah. It was just, you know, I mean, the, yeah. I mean, they're not like they're still coming, but yeah, I mean, it is the probably most used area. Yeah, you know, and so like, and there's some, like I said, the shelving is, is certainly a safety issue. We do what we can. And, and, yeah, if you yeah. if you push it, it well, we're very careful, but it yeah. would be nice to be able to get something. Um, no, I have a question. Yeah, so basically that line is going to be, you know, we've got some kind of minimums that we'll work with because there's always going to be some improvements that we'll need to do. It's just the cost of, of managing an increasingly aging facility. 
Um, but anything about that certainly would be great and allow us to make whatever changes we could to these services to help, you know, kind of improve the, the as look and feel. As far as the 6200 building, do we have any thoughts on what we're going to do with it? Well, you know, that that is um, it's an interesting uh, I had a really interesting conversation with Ron, our new uh, IT person, new network administrator. Um, certainly that's up to the board. I know, um, you know, I'm aware of the issues with the cost of the sprinkler and, and some of the things that uh, we had hoped to do with that building we weren't able to do because of the cost of just making it, uh, up to, bringing it up to code in order to have, you know, the public in it. Um, I will be completely honest right now, we're using it as a big storage facility um, with a lot of old stuff. So actually, Dave and I are going to be going over this week and kind of figure out what we can get rid of. We may even just get a small dumpster just to get rid of some things that, you know, we've just been hanging for getting rid of all the chairs. So, <laughs> so some of that stuff. I would, um, I would throw out the possibility. Yeah, just be, you know, I mean, this, uh, this was purchased for a reason to uh, enhance the library. Right. If it's not enhancing the library at this point in time, would it be worth selling it? That's See, seeing what's out there. We mm -hmm. bought it in a very depressed economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things are looking a little bit better. I don't know. That I'm, I'm not. I think that um, that's just floating me. No, no, no. I, that's up to the board. I don't have. No. I will actually. I will be completely honest. I don't have. Um, I don't have a lot of thoughts on that yet. I have a few ideas. One of the things that um, the Ron had come to me the other day, and we've, he's been on the job a couple weeks now, so we have our weekly meetings, and um, he had been over in that space uh, for the first time sometime last week. And one of the things that he's going to be kind of putting together just a real broad proposal outlined with a potential idea was, um, I know we talked about um, when the library bought it, using it as you know meeting space, computer use space, that kind of thing. But Ron is thinking about taking it even a step further and not making it so much. I mean, the library would certainly be responsible and, and kind of reap the benefits, if you will, but making it more of a maker space um, for the community. You know, having it be open different hours than the library, getting in private partnerships and that kind of thing. You know, doing computing. You know. Hacking. I mean, all kinds of different things that we could. He's really involved in a number of different um, computer technology organizations, and they talk a lot about these kinds of things. And so, <coughs> you get outside money for it. Exactly. And so that's he's really thinking about making that more of a, a you know, a, a private partnership, private collaborations, and really having it be. Because he said, for example, he said. You know, if you've got some computer, I'm going to be not PC, but computer geeks, so they you know they're going to work and they, they work nine to five, but then they want to do their, you know, hacking or online gaming or playing, and this is just could just be one potential use of it, but just this kind of he uses as an example. He said they want to be able to do that after work and into the late into the evenings. So why wouldn't we have something that's a separate facility that we wouldn't have to worry about keeping the rest of the library locked down, but we could say, you know what, here this is open all night. Or it's open till three in the a.m. or something like that. But he said, you know, he said there's some other possibilities if we kind of think outside the box a little bit. To a, uh, <laughs> it's really close to the bar. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah. the point being, so he's pulling together some ideas for me about that because I was really intrigued by that, and I think that's One a great idea. One thing I can tell you is that I've heard from parents who would like to see more coding being taught at the school, and the school can facilitate. So if you're looking at those sorts those of kinds things, of things, something exactly. not just the adults, right, for everyone, but to use that. But I think I mean he was really pushing, you know, make that work. <coughs> of you know private industry would collaboration. You like you would you like I, I've got I've got a soda, but so I think that. Um, I think we. I think there's some potential. I think we have to. Uh, we have to decide, and the, the the board would have to decide. Is it worth hanging on to, bringing up to code? You know, looking at how much would it cost us to to create something that would allow us to make this kind of bigger maker space and and of, you know be associated with the library. But the PR would be would be amazing. Would. I mean, and you know, we would pull it out of some areas. alternatives of what to do with it. I don't think the board should look at closing it down without. I think right now some suggestions of what it would be right and how it could be yeah. paid right. For. So I think right now, and I I think you know, 
things have, have settled down a little bit, if you will. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> so I, but it's, you know, I mean, I think some of the kind of, you know, the big, the big changes in personnel, those have gone through, they're, they're, I, in terms of that, we're, we, pre, we feel pretty stable. You know, renovation is done, bathroom remodel is done, all of that, that is done. So, and right now it doesn't really cost us anything to keep it. So, but I, but I absolutely, I mean, I think that that has to be on the table as opposed to what, what potentially could we make what could potentially we use it for, what would it cost us to my, turn it My other thought, simple. too, if you sold that and had a profit and have the money, uh, we've got three crummier buildings here that you would hope eventually you could grab, right. uh, which, even if you use them for parking, right. uh, we're going to be paying $1,000 a month. Yeah. You know, Starting next month. It's yeah. yeah. all grand a year down the tubes. I know. And they put it here. Yeah. So that's just just the thought. No, absolutely. I think that all of that needs to be on the table. But I think that, um, like I said, I'm I'm really intrigued by that. I, I think we need to put all those things on the table and say, you know, here's what we could potentially get if we tried to sell it. You know, I don't know what the market would be, what it could bear. I mean, I know that right down the street there's another building that's for sale. You know, I, I, yeah, I been for a long exactly. Time. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't know, I, and I don't know that. But I, you know, certainly we would we would want to start looking into those things so that we can make some decisions going forward. One of the things we might think about is uh, picking a mutual Saturday morning when we can all get together for three or four hours and toss some of these ideas sure. around. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like just a day away. Yes. And just bring up ideas. They're all good. That was a large yeah, investment. So yeah, start yeah. Right absolutely. Get I think there's different opportunities for these incubators. Right. Business, right. business incubators, right. and the reason one in this area, the nearest right. one I know of is in Evans. Right. Right. Skokie. Skokie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that yeah, something, you know, and the thing is, is that that space is, it, that, that could be part of, parcel, all mm -hmm. of this. You know, we could do coding, we could do, you know, kind of maker spaces, business incubator sort of thing. But to have that there and, it gives us some unique opportunities in that we aren't, we don't have to keep this building open to have that building be open, and depending on what we do with it, it might be, you know, less oversight than you know you wouldn't need a full staff like you do in this building, that kind of thing. But I think that there is some potential there. We just need to balance. We just need to look at that and say, is it worth it for us to move forward? Can we feasibly financially do that? Um, or would it be better in our long, would, for our long term? My own feeling is I'd rather see it used for library right. purposes. And I just want to throw that out there yeah, so that it's out there. Yeah, I think I think that you're exactly, absolutely right. Well, it has to be on the table. Uh, you still, it used to be, I understand, from planes from the West End weren't built and nobody pays attention to that. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Um, you know, it's interesting. We try because very I have hard. Friends that live over there. <laughs> yes. well, we they try very hard. Um, you know, we, we we're working. We're trying. We work with the schools a lot. Um, you know, we're trying to do outreach to them. It's interesting that you should say that though, because at this meeting that I just went to with the you know Ralph from the village and Jeff from the park district, and there were three school superintendents there, all the various um, school districts. Um, and one of the complaints that they're seeing as well is, is from the west side of town. And so I think that it's um, it's a challenge for all of us, uh, you know, if our headquarters are on the east side of town, it, you know, some of that's location. Um, you know, I've only been back now six months or whatever, but it just, I haven't, I haven't. Considering it's three and a half miles across town, I know. I know. It's it's, it's so obvious though because of the forest preserve and the train and the, the yeah. train tracks, yes. But Which are in my living room, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But I think um, you know, I, I've had some different thoughts. We're gonna be doing some different promotions. We've been talking about that for like going into next year, like you know, design contests for the library card and maybe doing some artwork in the um, children's department or whatever. Um, things that we can encourage uh, people from you know, both the east and west side of town to do. Um, you know, I had a thought that, uh, you know, one of the things, one of the one of the statistics that I am really bothered by that uh, I think is, is one that we do need to be thinking about is how many people in town have library cards. And um, so one of my thoughts was potentially next year just mailing everyone a library card. We know everyone's in town. We know they can't get us to us. Yeah, why not try something like that? I mean, so I'm trying, you know, we're trying to think of different things. I mean, it has pluses and minuses, I'm not sure we'll do that yet. But I mean, 
there's some different things that we could potentially try to do. I've not heard that so much this time around, so I'll, but, you know, I can, I'll check with staff and see what kind of feedback we've been getting. Yeah, I think the idea was to set on a temporary target. Right, there's a lot of that. You could use it once or twice right. or something. But, you know, my, my thinking is we already know, I mean, that's one of the advantages of being like more grover. I mean, I can tell exactly where my boundaries are. I don't have, I don't have to worry about a non-resident population too much. I can pretty much tell, you know, who's here. I know those people are paying taxes. You would figure out who doesn't have them, right? Like you would right. mail me one exactly. there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I've got, I can do that. Yeah, we would do that. We would look at who already has one and who doesn't, just mail it to them. So it's good for a year. So, I mean, one of the things that's always kind of bothered me is, you know, we talk a lot about in the library world about, you know, oh, staying relevant and people using us and, and all those different things. And, and um, But then we have so many hoops I have to jump through sometimes. And so I, and I like to minimize the barriers to people using us as much as we can within our, you know, as much as we can, yeah, we can. And my, <laughs> trust me, as I, I get to caught by them coming and going to work every day, I have to imagine how noisy those trains are. So out by where I live, they actually had, um, there was one train track, and at least this one's all commuters, so about where I was, no, it was a freight train. It's I've never been caught by a freight train. 10, 15 on Friday night. Yeah, so there's a, there was one that was caught by a freight train, train, train constantly, yeah. and they, they finally, built the road over the tracks. Yeah. And so as I was sitting there at the tracks, I thought they need to do this. It's never going to happen here. <laughs> but, but so, uh, long answer yeah. to your question, I'm sorry, but um, we're trying to stay cognizant of that, and certainly if any of you out in the community hear about things like that, certainly let me or you know anyone know so that we can and bring it to our attention so we can work on making sure that we're addressing that as much as we can. Um, one of the things, just as a thought, when if there's going to be any reconstructing and new services, you got to keep handicap in mind the distance between yep. shelves, yep. etc. Yep, that's that's a big issue down there. Once we started mm -hmm. with it, you know, we have to do it all. Yep, and yep. they're watching us. Yes, whoever they are. Well, you know, the the thing is about youth services departments is that. Um, handicap also has the advantage of then you can get strollers up and down the aisles too. <laughs> So, but yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. Yeah, once we start making those changes, we have to. You don't see again 740, 760, 7060, 7061, 80, 8000, 810, etc. All of these, there could be plus a limit raises. There could be. Um, these have stayed fairly stable for the past several years. Okay. So, um, so they're about to get us. <laughs> hopefully not. Um, you know, there the is postage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Postage changes every week. Right. So. Postage yeah. is going up. But um, it's always going up. Yeah. So these are fairly stable, and and and, and, and these are rounded. <laughs> so usually, what I've tried to do in revenues, I try to round down. I always assume I'm not going to get as much as I hoped for. And when I look at expenses, I try to round up okay. because I always figure things are gonna. So, you know, it says 14,000, it probably is closer to 13,000, but I wanna give myself at least enough room that I don't have to. Mileage and uh, miscellaneous work. Mm -hmm. The numbers are weird. <clears throat> okay, so my- Miles is 8150. Yeah, I, I know on your, yes. So there are ones before the other, sorry. No, that's okay, I just kept with the notes. Yeah, I did the other day and I was, hey, I was really busy being fussy. Yeah, yeah I know, I, those are flip-flops, so my apologies for that. You can keep them. So we got operations or whatever going up by about seventy thousand. Special fees and taxes da -da -da, going up about nine thousand. And then we got eight thousand in personnel subtotals. So you're accounting for most of the increase. Three percent. Um. 
for the board meeting, which I'm sure we're going to continue talking about this, yeah. can we kind of classify this into some major cost drivers so that we can actually tell the public this is what's forcing us to do whatever? Sure. <clears throat> So when you say major cost drivers, um, like the generator and the service, I mean you want those. There's some, there's avoidable, there's avoidable costs, there's unavoidable costs. So kind of what I wrote in here, but maybe something a little bit more essential. To yeah, yeah, really simple. <laughs> sure. So that Absolutely. my sixth grader can understand. Yeah. Because one of the things that I do hear from people is, how long is the library going to be around? And we don't use it. At the, you know, I got everything on my phone. And, you know, that's the group. No, I know. The naysayers are always louder than anybody else. I know. So. I'm glad you're going to try to get the whole staff to the LA. Yeah, you it's um, nice. Uh, it, it would be. Yeah, yeah, I know it's here. You take the train. It's not the point. They have hours to work. So just kind of a, a synopsis, if you will, of this would be I, or, you know, if we're gonna move forward with anything, you know, there's there's some causation by the government, you know, that, that's changing the way we have to account for salaries, which is increasing some of the load. Some of the and we got some basic, basic Yeah, I mean it's just there and like it or not, we have to, we have to do this. I think talk about the shelving. Right. And who in town knows that you replaced all the drinking fountains so that there's no chance we'll be imparting lead upon our children? <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Um, no one as of this point, but I will make myself a note. And uh, the ideas of some of the ideas about bringing meetings and things like that that's doable right now. To, and to I can tell you the, the Chamber of Commerce would welcome an evening at the library. Okay. As yeah, president, you can say that. Okay. I can pretty much pull it out. Um, so if I pull some things together, can I send you kind of a draft and let me know if that's what you're thinking? Yeah. And then so I, so that I can have something prepared then. Yeah. Um, so besides that, is there any other numbers anyone wants to see? Is there anything else you want me to do? I'm going to look at it in great detail, and I would encourage all the other trustees to do the same thing. And if you're uncomfortable with a certain amount, I think you've got it broke out where it's two, ten, three, four, whatever. Right. You kind of circle what you feel strongly about. You, you know, and certainly, it. and when we can do this again, and I know we didn't do yeah. it this time, but you know, one of the things that we can do is is I have all of this in my spreadsheet. So if we want to plug in different numbers, so we can see what that looks yeah. like. You know, I mean, it's not to say that you don't end up with the two point six five nine. In, you it know that kind of two point six five is better than three. <laughs> right, exactly. And Paul's so, got a good point that we might be a beneficiary to some point. And, right. So, but keep in mind yeah. again that what we're looking at is just the dollar amount yeah. that we're asking the village to levy for yes. us, and that and that a we don't have to, but I always try to run a balanced budget because the other thing is that we have very little in reserves right now in terms of what I feel comfortable with. I'm really yeah, we're looking to do. So I would just caution you if you have questions about things, just remember that you can't email the group um, because of open yeah. meetings. That if you have questions, um, you can send them to me, and then if it's something for everyone, I can send them on. Or if you just have specific questions that you just want to ask me or want something, want me to prepare something before the next board meeting, I'd be happy to do that. Younger families are moving in, I think, a better looking. Use services department. So maybe I'm that a little Something bit. Something to say for mm -hmm. I think we should just tell them it's not really Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lower level. One of the places if you ever people are moving, which is surprising, is in Tecate, is the Dependos. Oh, yeah. Uh, it used to be they were all people that were twice my age, which yeah. is hard to be. Uh, now I, I see it, you should the school bus let them walk out about 15 kids walking yeah. up the street. So and that was just one school bus. Who knows about just, the Just um, and I'm fine either way. Whatever the board wants to do. Um, the October board meeting is pretty full um, because of this. And uh, Brian Lefevre from Sickich, who is our auditor, will be out because now that the actuarial report is done. Um, they actually completed our audit, so they'll be reporting on the 2015 audit, <laughs> and then back probably sometime in April to do our 2016 audit. 
But um, so he's going to be here, or one of his representatives, Sikich, will be here that evening as well. And then we've got some other. Um, I think there'll be a lot of uh, items on the agenda. There, most of them won't take that long, but it will be a fairly full meeting. So the only reason I throw that out there is, do you feel the need to have another special board meeting regarding the budget before that? Or do we want to oh, meet so half an hour earlier, meet earlier, earlier if like, people wanted to do that? I'm fine with that. So meeting earlier, if or you wanna, if you want to have a budget meeting prior to the board, what, meeting. whatever the board wants to do. Let's do I'm, that. Let's do that. I'm fine with that. I'm going to make a special meeting. So you want to have another special meeting, Paul? Just let's schedule just in case. Okay. So um, so not meet early, have a different meeting entirely. Budget meeting, if we break after 15 minutes, then we'll start the other minutes. Okay, so this is, so we're talking about on the 13th. Yeah. Meeting like at 6.30. It's like that idea. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you want to have a special meeting before the regular meeting about the budget. Is that what you're, I just want to be clear. I so think I'm that. lean, I, that's what I thought I heard. Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. then I couldn't tell what you were yeah. saying. So, so maybe, okay. maybe on the 13th, which is the night of our regular meeting, we yeah. meet at 6. Is that, or is that too late? Or too early? You want to meet at 6.30? Okay. Like? I'm. I mean, I'm in town. It's. I'm fine. I do know that you won't be. Here, no, so. I will be here. Oh, okay. I'm leaving in the morning. Okay. Okay. I'll be fine. Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. So I'm fine. I would say six. Just. Just. Just in case. Just, exactly. All right. And that way, if, if we meet and you and everyone says no, Pam, we like two point five, or it's two percent, and make it happen, or whatever. Then you can go with the dollar. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Okay. Totally yeah. Yeah. So October 13th, we'll have a special board meeting at 6. Six o'clock. Yeah. And then our regular board meeting will start at 7. Is that what we're using? I should. I, I have a note that Bill's not here, but I think that's actually now not correct. Yeah. I can get a big, I'll try and get a big stick. I'll let you know. Which is what you want. Okay, that's fine. I'll have to get a babysitter anyway, so he's not here. Okay, so the 13th. I think you should read the kids here. Oh, you, you didn't enjoy Special that. Special board meeting at 6, right just to discuss the budget. Regular board meeting at 7, which will be the audit, continuation of any budget yeah. stuff. Um, Tell us what. Awesome. Um, do you want to officially adjourn? Motion to adjourn this one. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned at 8 o'clock.